Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here and the Bank of Canada just locked in its policy. And this is a big deal for everyone in Canada, especially so if you're someone who's in the market looking for a job or if you're someone who's interested in the real estate market. The Bank of Canada is essentially doing one big balancing act right now between three things, inflation, interest rates, and jobs. Now, are they actually doing a good job of this? Well, listen to this and then you can make up your own mind. And of course, we're going to be going over the information that you need to keep your eyes on over the next little while, so stay tuned for that. And also, before we get into it, check out the links in the description where you can open up your own investment accounts and start taking your wealth into your own hands. All right, let's get into this announcement. Just this morning, the Bank of Canada came out and announced that they'd be keeping their overnight interest rate at 0.25%. Now, this overnight interest rate has an impact on a ton of different things. The first one is it impacts the rate at which different banks can lend out to each other, and it has a large impact on short-term lending. Ending. Now this may sound like it's only for businesses, but it does have a big impact on all types of lending and all types of credit, including mortgages and business loans among many others. And this also affects everything I mentioned before, jobs in Canada, inflation in Canada, as well as the Canadian real estate market. Now you see the Bank of Canada has different mindsets around how their decisions about this interest rate is going to affect each of these different categories. In terms of jobs, the Bank of Canada believes that having a low interest rate will actually increase the amount of people who are able to get jobs. Their thinking is like this, if we keep interest rates low, it's cheaper for businesses to borrow money and expand their operations, essentially adding more jobs to the Canadian job market so that more Canadians can be working. But on the other side of things, when they keep these interest rates super low, there's also concerns about inflation as well as the real estate market. Now for inflation, when they keep that interest rate low, uh, there's huge concerns that they're just adding more and more money to the system through something called their quantitative easing program. Right now, the Bank of Canada is essentially printing $3 billion a week uh, as a way to sort of suppress the interest rates and keep them super, super low. Now, their decision to keep these interest rates so, so low also has a huge impact on the Canadian real estate market. Many people debate what is actually the thing that's driving these huge gains in real estate prices. This is one of the biggest indicators, in my view, is that the interest rates have been low for long. They've been keeping interest rates low for a long amount of time, meaning it's cheaper for people to borrow money to go then spend on houses, whether they're a first time home buyer, an investor, or someone else who's looking to get into the market. So to summarize, when the Bank of Canada keeps those interest rates low, essentially they're saying, hey, we want to develop more jobs here in Canada, but also we're going to do this at the risk of inflation and skyrocketing real estate prices. Currently, the Bank of Canada is actually pretty concerned about real estate. They came out last month saying, we're worried that people are buying too much home and that they're buying with the idea that prices are just going to continually go up forever and ever and ever. Um, but they're stuck in a little bit of a rock, in between a rock and a hard place here, and they're not actually able to take any action on the housing market. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here with the inflation data. Now, this is the most recent inflation data, and we actually had quite a boost in inflation recently, um, the highest level levels in quite some time since back around 2011. We actually have a 3.4% inflation rate right now. And the Bank of Canada, Canada, they actually have a mandate that it's their job to keep inflation right around the 2% mark. Now, they've expanded from this 2% mark and said, okay, well, that's our target. 2% is where we'd like it to be ideally, this CPI or inflation index, the consumer price index. They want to keep it at 2%, but they're comfortable if the CPI is between 1% and 3%. You can sort of see this here in the uh, grayed out portion of this chart. Um, this is the 3% mark and this is the 1% mark. So anytime inflation is in between those targets, they're feeling relatively okay about it. Now, this may uh, pique your interest because as of recently, the most recent data that came out uh, in April 2021, uh, or it came out in May, about April 2021, well, it showed the CPI at 3.4, almost half a percent over the band or the comfort range that they're actually comfor comfortable with. Um, again, keeping in mind that 2% is their ideal target. Now you might be thinking, Russell, you just said that that range is between 1% and 3% and they start to worry when it's actually over that range. Um, so you might be saying, why don't they just uh, raise up interest rates? Remember when you raise interest rates that generally brings down inflation? Why don't you just raise up interest rates and bring this number back down a little bit so we can see less inflation in our economy? And you, that would be a reasonable question to ask. But the Bank of Canada actually has two reasons why they do not want to raise interest rates in terms of 
inflation. Now, the first one is that they actually don't believe that this 3.4, uh, definitely above their range, they don't think that that's going to last very long, and they think that it's only due to something called base year effects. Now, essentially, to simplify this, base year effects means, well, with the CPI, this is actually compared over the course of 12 years. So when we look at this data from April 2021, we're actually comparing it back to April of 2020. And the Bank of Canada is saying because of this base year effect, well, that this is actually a kind of an inflated inflation number, saying that this only looks so bad because it's compared to like one of the worst periods of inflation that we or, or of deflation that we've seen in the past 20 years. Now, uh, you can kind of see this inverse hap happening in inverse in the history, right? So when we see high inflation here, this is 3.7 way back in 2011 of May 2011. Well, when we flip forward to May 2012, I'll find it here. Well, we can see that sort of coincides with a dip. So when we see these high inflation values, it generally determines that in one year, there's going to be a lower inflation value. And the same when we see low inflation, we could see high inflation a year later. And that's what the Bank of Canada is saying we're seeing here when we compare April 2020 to April 2021. So essentially the Bank of Canada is saying, whoa, hold your horses. We don't want to change our interest rates in response to this inflation because we don't actually know if this inflation is going to last for the long term. And based on their predictions, they think that it's going to go down over time. So that's the first reason that they don't want to touch interest rates. Now, the second one is employment. You might remember from the beginning when they when we talked about how when inflate or when uh, interest rates are lower, uh, the Bank of Canada believes that that generates more jobs in the economy. Now, based on some recent employment data, Data, uh, this could give us some uh, indication as to why they're not trying to raise rates yet. Just last week, we got Canada's new employment data, and you can see it here on this headline, economy lost 68,000 jobs in May, and the unemployment rate rose slightly to 8.2%. So the Bank of Canada sees this, says, hey, we're losing jobs right now. Uh, if we raise interest rates, businesses will borrow less and they'll create less jobs, and we could have an even worse employment situation on our hands. So that's what the Bank of Canada is thinking. And now, there is some debate around where these jobs are actually going, um, because we are seeing similar headlines, right? Right here saying that rehiring is a big issue right now, especially for restaurants and hotels as they start to reopen. It seems like over the course of the pandemic, people have decided, hey, maybe I don't want to go back to that industry. Or maybe over the past year and a half, they've decided, well, I'm not just going to wait for things to reopen and not work in perpetuity. Maybe I'm going to transition into a different job, into a different sector and take my career on from there. So restaurants and hotels are having a lot of trouble hiring right now, but also we're seeing this rising unemployment data. So essentially the Bank of Canada is in this super weird place where they can't address one issue without negatively affecting another issue that they have to deal with, right? We have so many people complaining about the high real estate prices and the low lending costs, but if they were to raise those lending costs, well, we might have an employment crisis on our hands saying that there wouldn't be as much growth in our economy. So you can sort of start to see the rock and the hard place that the Bank of Canada is sort of stuck in between right now. Uh, so it, it's definitely interesting, but we're going to have to be looking out for a couple different things. First off, tomorrow, the deputy governor of the Bank of Canada will be holding a press conference. Now, they're going to start out with about an hour where he's addressing some sort of a chamber of commerce. Um, it's likely just going to be a longer form speech uh, from this deputy governor of the Bank of Canada. But the most important thing that we want to keep our eyes on here is right directly after this, this, where they're actually opening it up to press. The press can come in and ask direct questions to this deputy governor of the Bank of Canada. And usually, in my experience, it's those questions that reporters ask where we actually get the most insight as to what's going on right here in Canada. Now I'm going to be live streaming that press conference but there also is one more thing that we need to keep our eyes fo open for and that's the new inflation data. The new inflation data for May of 2021. Now this is scheduled to come out in exactly one week on June 16th and we're going to get an answer here right? We're going to get an answer as to whether or not we're going to see this go back down or stay uh, at the same rate that the Bank of Canada thinks it's going to just based on these base year effects or we're going to find out if like some economists believe with all the money printing and all the the cash handouts that have been going out to the economy that we're going to see this skyrocket now we're going to find out in about a week so we're, I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on that and I'll keep you updated right here on the channel and it's all going to have a quite a big impact on the future of Canada and as well as the future of the Bank of Canada's decisions about all of these things that are so uh, intrinsically interconnected and, and locked in together so I 
I find this stuff really interesting and I want to know what you think about it. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think the Bank of Canada is doing a good job in this balancing act? Or do you think that they should make some sacrifices to, uh, to solve some problems on at least one side of this? It's all one big mess and I'd love to hear from you down there. And of course, check out the links in the description where you can sign up for the Canada Money Mastery Program with that coupon code or you can open up investment accounts to start taking your wealth into your own hands. It's so important to do these days. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time. This channel is supported by viewers like you. Thanks channel members.